Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Pitch Talk. We are fans of football dropping vlogs, blogs, videos and podcasts on the beautiful game. Check out our videos on YouTube and Instagram's IGTV, including special feature segments, vlogs such as 5 Minutes with the G, The Straight Shooting View, Coaching with JBK, Audio on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podomatic, Spotify, Mixcloud and other podcast platforms. Join the Pitch Talk revolution on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and our official website www.pitch-talk.com The pitch is where we eat The pitch is where we sleep And the pitch is where we talk Welcome to The Straight Shooting View Hey everybody, Straight Shooting LJ here and welcome to a very special episode of the Straight Shooting View. And in this episode, I'd like to review the Anton Ferdinand documentary, Football, Racism and Me, shown on the BBC back in 2020. This is part of our focus on Black History Month in 2021. So let's get straight into the proceedings. You know what? To me, the first thing of interest to me during the the documentary during the hour came about nine minutes in and it was interesting to me that Rio Ferdinand didn't even know what was said initially didn't even know what was said to him initially now I'm glad someone from the public actually reported it because otherwise I feel that the FA would have swept it under the rug as they kind of usually do and Henry Winter of the time saying that it was strange that Ferdinand didn't say anything at the time to me was stupid in my view it was stupid but kick it out and their comments about not betraying black history and he must speak out that kind of lacked a lot of common sense to me because the media would have absolutely castigated Anton Ferdinand as he was going against John Terry who with all due respect is a white national hero in this country and at that time could do no wrong. And it was no surprise that the FA probed, um, probed Anton Ferdinand in the way they did. Because the FA have an abysmal track record when it comes to racism and dealing with it. And it's not often that I agree with Neil Warnock. But he's actually right that Ferdinand was left on his own. And the FA were embarrassed and wanted to just make it go away. Because that's what the FA generally do is guardians of the game. But you know what? Kick it out, I think, was spot on. Spot on in saying that Anton Ferdinand needed to speak out. But I think they should have got together with Anton first and then put something out. Rather than just kind of basically burying him by making a statement, trying to force his hand and get Anton to come out and say and say what he needed to. And to me, it was really sad that, that Anton Ferdinand actually felt that he was the victim. But... The lead investigator in that clip that was played during it was an absolutely disgrace, absolute disgrace. And you can hear her basically brown nosing John Terry. And for me, that's a major part of the problem. Like that, see you next Tuesday of a woman felt sorry for John Terry, like he was the victim. I mean, sharing jokes during an investigation as if that wasn't bad enough, but the FA not releasing the full interview. It really shows another part of the problem as well, as mentioned earlier about they just wanted to make it go away. Ferdinand's question about protecting Terry, I think, was actually a fair one. And they definitely protected him because I said he was a national hero. And Heather Rabatz was also right that if you're not a part of that culture, then you get treated differently. And those of us of a black and minority ethnic background always get treated differently in those situations. And Ferdinand getting booed for supposedly losing John Terry, the England captaincy. It really does show the plague of racism in this country that is alive and well. And the fact that the victim was blamed, again, is just utterly backwards and disgraceful. I mean, Anton saying to his dad about turning out your own pockets, that was interesting as well. Because I've done the same. When I've been stopped and searched, especially... Um, Back in 2002, when I was searched outside my college, I emptied my back because fuck having them try and potentially plant anything on me, that being the police, because you never know. I mean, Darren Lewis from The Mirror was right in regards to football having a horrible side. And sadly, it's the same with society. 
And as Mario Balotelli rightly said in 2014, the races hide it better here. So it's one of them ones where it's like, Terry should have been found guilty, but Ashley Cole being the sellout he is and was, he actually testified for Terry. And it's like, dude, what are you doing? I mean, sadly, we saw Marcus Rashford, Jaden Sancho, and a 19-year-old, Bukayo Saka, miss their penalties in the European Championships, just gone in the final against Italy. And it showed again how that simmering racist underbelly in our country of Great, of Great Britain, once again, the disgraceful racial abuse that those three had to suffer on social media from a group of morons really showed it. And John Terry, to me, repeating the words back and saying, I don't think he was calling me a black cunt. That's just absurd. Him saying he was just repeating it back is absurd. I mean, how could someone black call a white guy a black cunt? And the not guilty verdict, based on what the magistrate said, was absurd as well. The misunderstanding mentioned and there being a doubt despite Anton um, being said to be a believable witness. That's an oxymoron. John Terry's version being unlikely to have happened. His version of events. That's an oxymoron. But again, it's a microcosm of society. Because as I said, the FA basically did the same and pretty much let him off. A little slap on the wrist. I think it was sad though that Anton Ferdinand felt guilt. And in regards to his mum, that is heartbreaking. And the part with the, with the psychotherapist was heartbreaking, to be honest, as well. But not, as, but not surprising. Because the parasitic media will always warp perception and make us as black people look like we're wrong. So I can understand why Ferdinand didn't speak out at the time. And as mentioned earlier, we live in a world where the victim is made to look like they are the problem whenever they speak up. Which is completely backwards. Completely. And that basically advocates more people to abuse others, whether racially, whether it be homophobic, whether it be based on gender. And of course, yeah, the FA did fine and ban John Terry eventually. But in my view, that was the FA just trying to score PR points because Terry didn't even apologize to Ferdinand for the language he used. It's one of them ones that was massively telling that he didn't even apologize I mean, I was surprised they didn't even they didn't go and interview any older Luca because she basically had the same experience, and it was worse because she because it was the England Lionesses manager Mark Sampson that she was going against. So it was kind of messed up that the interview, that she wasn't interviewed. I mean, Ferdinand and female Spurs player Renee Hector when they spoke, I mean. They are lighter skinned, which tells a story in and of itself, to be perfectly honest. But in my view, the BBC, it was them not going too far down the well because they know they could get exposed too, I feel. And as it happens, actually, at the time of the documentary, I dropped a comment on Troy Townsend, head of um, development at Kick It Out, on his LinkedIn page after I watched the documentary. And I saw, and I saw him post on LinkedIn. And... I, I did say to him that sadly documentaries or basically anything by large media companies will always have an agenda, an ulterior motive. And the BBC specifically have got so bad with their agenda pushing over the last year or two, it's untrue. General election 2019, just look at that. Look at the run up to that. But sadly as well, as I also said to, um, to Townsend, to Troy Townsend, most people won't even realise the constraints that the guys that kick it out will be working under. And admitting faults or mistakes is usually admirable, but with a subject like this and the high expectations that people have from you, will always make it even more difficult. And it was admirable that Townsend admitted, you know what, we made a mistake. But again, a lot of people won't even look at the limitations of basically being a small entity like Kick It Out, trying to change an entire system. And the black struggle, it is the same, that most people won't understand it. 
and most won't even try to look beyond the mainstream media or the parasitic media as I call it. They won't try to look behind the narrative and look at what's really happening and how deeply ingrained the injustice and inequality and flat out racism and discrimination, how deep it goes in football and society. Because football is a microcosm of society, as I've said on numerous pitch talk shows, videos, and to anybody who will listen, football is a microcosm of society. And the fight to eradicate racism can't be just a football in battle because it's so much big, bigger than that. It can't be belittled into being perceived as just a football battle and a footballing problem and issue because it permeates every single facet of society and education is the key it is the key factor in the process. And if uncomfortable conversations about racism and general bias and prejudice have to be had, then so be it. The FA, UEFA, FIFA, the Premier League, they can they can either help or continue to be the dinosaurs that they are. And that they have been as entities and keep fighting it and advocating the inequalities and imbalances in the game. Such as the lack of BAME coaches, just to name one thing. The work of Kick It Out, in my view, is definitely appreciated. And those of us who look beyond the headlines realise, to an extent, how difficult it must be to try and affect any sort of change. Basically, being from basically doing it from the outside looking in. When the power base is controlled by an iron-clad good old boy network. And you know what? Coming back to the documentary again. Jordan Henderson was right on in regards to the club, Liverpool. Not handling the Suarez if ever a situation right. But sadly, the FA didn't either. Considering how they did the investigation. I read a lot of pages. I read 72 pages out of 115. And it had more holes than an Afghan rug. But you know what, some have criticised Henderson, but you got to remember, he was 2021 at the point of the Suarez ever incident. He wasn't the player he is now in regards to experience. Um, he didn't have the standing at the club that he has now as well. So he probably didn't want to, quote unquote, rock the boat and jeopardise himself, which sounds selfish. But hell, I know people at work, where I've worked before as well. Who should who have stuff that they should speak out about, but don't because they're afraid to. Not even just for themselves, not just for rocking the boat, but they're afraid of getting fired and discriminated against. Now, John Terry not returning Anton Ferdinand's email to me shows what kind of a person he is, along with his statement about he's moved on and, and all that crap. He did I said he didn't even apologize to Anton Ferdinand directly. So how can Anton being the victim move on? If there's been no acknowledgement of wrongdoing or apology. The FA to me took the piss actually. With fully respecting Ferdinand's recollection of the event. And the case was approached with objectivity and impartiality. No it wasn't. Because the audio clip played on the documentary. Which is only a bit of it. And there was only a tiny bit that was released. Doesn't tell that story. The FA say that nobody at Kick It Out has ever been pressured or lost their job for criticising the FA is bollocks, in my, in my view. The pressure is subconscious. It doesn't have to be blatant. And as Troy Townsend said, he feels like he's putting his job on the line every time he speaks. So that's subconscious. Ironically, ironically that actually speaks volumes about the subtlety of the power that the FA truly wields. And the fact that it's being used in the wrong way as well. But you know what? Written policy can encourage kick it out. But the actions of the FA and the punishments handed out, they tell a completely different story. Every time, pretty much, they tell a complete opposite story as well. And for me, it's rife at the top level of the game because FIFA and UEFA do exactly the same thing. We're against racism. We're against discrimination. But then you look at the punishments handed out to those who are offenders. Now, the club in general, Liverpool, coming back to that, it was a mess at that point. And the T-shirt mandate will have almost certainly come from the owner's FSG. And as I said at the time, Glenn Johnson was probably forced to wear it or potentially be ostracised from the club. And in regards to what Anton Ferdinand said about what he about um, what he was feeling like, and feeling like he was tackling the issue alone, kind of ties into that. 
to me, FSG, Fenway Sports Group, Liverpool's owners, they haven't fucked up much, but early on they fucked up a good few things. And I found it very interesting as well that the FA didn't provide a copy of their diversity policy to the production team. Because to me, that makes it look like the FA have something to hide. Because wouldn't they, in theory, want to go out of their way to make themselves look like they're, more, they're the most diverse and inclusive entity on the planet after how this documentary painted them in a very bad light? And also other incidents at the time as well during the screening of the documentary, like the Greg Clark's um, sacking slash resignation, depending on who you believe. That made the FA look terrible. But for me, all in all, it was actually an interesting documentary, which really scratched the surface of corruption and the systemic and institutional racism that runs deep at the FA and in wider society. Because that said, it's not just a footballing thing. And in my view... Token gestures such as taking the knee, as I've said for a year now, won't change things. Change needs to be forced and maintained to have any sort of impact, let alone a lasting one. And also, as we saw last year, and as we've seen in the summer, this isn't even just an English problem. Look at Hungary, for instance, and their antiquated, draconian views on homosexuality and the abuse that they gave England's players during the, the Qatar 2022 World Cup qualifier. Look at that. So this problem hasn't gone away. Anton Ferdinand, football racism is me, and me, as said, really scratched the surface. And that was done a year ago. It was screened a year ago, November of 2020. So it's one of them where it's like, what has changed? Taking the knee, as I've said before, is now part of the show for match of the day. It's part of the show. It's a gimmick. So... Uh, I don't know, man. It's one of them where it's like, as much as the documentary was good, it could have went a lot deeper. But where is the lasting change? Where is the change? It was so sad that Anton Fernand, as said, felt like a victim. So it felt like he had done wrong when he was the victim. How can you make someone who is a victim feel like they have done something wrong and you let someone like John Terry get away, basically get away with it? And it's like, oh, it, it is just absolutely atrocious. But you know what? I want to know your views. Anton Ferdinand, football, racism and me. What did you think of the documentary? Did the BBC scratch the surface? Did they leave out a lot that they should have put in? What about Anton Ferdinand? Do you, do you agree that he should have spoken up and spoken up earlier? Do you think there's still victim shaming and victim blaming when it comes to racism instead of blame, instead of more responsibility and more harsher punishments when it comes to the, uh, the offenders? Do the offenders basically get off scot-free dependent on their status? Oh man, comment section is below. Please let me know. You know what? I have been straight shooting LJA and this has been a review of Anton Ferdinand, Football, Racism and Me, the documentary from November of 2020. You know what? I want to know your views. www.pitch-talk.com. Let me know your views. Also, also on the website, you can catch our podcast on the podcast page. pitch Talk. Dot com and go to the podcast page. You can catch Coaching with JBK, 5 Minutes with the G, The Straight Shooting View, and many, many more podcast episodes that we've got, including special feature segments, Straight Shooting View top picks as well. You can catch there too. Also, at Pitch Talk on Twitter, tweet with us, follow us, see what we are up to. Join the footballing revolution we are working so hard to create. Facebook.com forward slash Pitch Talk. Become a fan, become a friend, become a member of the group. As I said, join the footballing revolution we are working so hard to create. At Pitch Talk on Instagram as well. Check out some pictures, vlog previews and more up there. You can catch our videos on YouTube. YouTube.com forward slash Pitch Talk. Videos including Pitch Talk at the 2021 SAL Cup Final 
and much more. Special feature segments are up there as well in video form. Also, we are verbal ambassadors in regards to our podcast at get G E T V U R B L at get verbal. Give them a follow on Twitter. Tell them we sent you because we are verbal ambassadors and proud of it as well. You can catch our podcast on verbal.com, um, Podomatic, Podbean, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, where Spotify, wherever you pick up your podcast, check out the Pitch Talk podcast as well. I have been Straight Shooting LJA and until next time, thank you for your time and enjoy Black History Month 2021. Take it easy, peeps. Join the Pitch Talk revolution. Check out the official Pitch Talk website. www.pitch-talk.com 